Welcome to another episode of You Ask For It. I'm Coach Mernie Young. I'm Coach Dan Wilms. And we have a guest, a very special guest, our first guest yes. from Washington, D.C. <laughs> Welcome, Keisha Morris. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on your show. It's All a right. pleasure to have you here. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad, I'm sure you're happy to be here. We are in Florida and you are freezing. <laughs> it was definitely freezing in D.C. I am so glad to be here in the 80 and 90 degree weather. It's wonderful. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> And the reason that we brought Keisha here today as your guest is because we have a very interesting question from someone in California who sent in the question, how can we find our purpose? And this is a profound question because each and every one of us should be asking this question. We should be always working towards our purpose because that is why we were created. We were created to do something unique in this world. And unless you are working towards our purpose, on your purpose, then you will always feel disconnected and unhappy. So today we want to answer, answer the question, um, how do we find our purpose? And Keisha has a remarkable story about how she found hers, <laughs> which she will tell you about. So Dan, give us some background on the person that sent in the question. Well, she is very concerned because she is in early 40s and she is quite asking all those questions. Why am I here for? Why uh, don't I feel uh, happy? Why don't I feel that I'm doing something worth it in my life? So, and she wants to know what to do. So the first thing that came to my mind when I started talking to her is purpose. I said, honey, you need to find your purpose. And she said, so how come? And that's why we are here. So today if you're wondering, what can you do to give more meaning to your life, to give to live a more fulfilled and more complete life, to understand why you're here, why you came here, and what why so many things happen to you. And maybe the most important question is what can I do with everything that's going on in my life? When you find your purpose, you find those answers because you finally understand who you truly are. Mm -hmm. And maybe the key is why you're here. So the question to you is how it happened? Well, that is a really good question. Um, so I started uh, my undergraduate career uh, thinking that I wanted to be a psychologist. Um, I pursued four or five years in getting my bachelor's degree. Uh, in, four or five? Well, I took a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, no, because you look 16. So <laughs> I'm 27. Um, she looks 14. <laughs> it's great. I have great genes. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I started my undergraduate career thinking that I wanted to be a psychologist. I always wanted to be a psychologist from the time I can remember. People told me that. Uh, I was great at giving advice. I would <laughs> give my law advice even when she didn't ask for it. Um, sure, you should have done that. Yeah, so um, I just continued that and that and that mindset that, you know, this is something that people say I'm good at. So let me, you know, go ahead and pursue that as a career. Um, personally, I didn't have passion uh, mm -hmm. about being a psychologist. Mm -hmm. It was, like I said, it was just something that people told me that I was good at. So I was like, okay, well, let me do it. It's supposed to make good money. So. Money. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to make good money. So um, let me, let me, let me do that. Um, now the first inkling that I had that psychology was not my chosen field was, um, I was actually in class one day, I was taking a clinical psychology class, and um, there were a very successful uh, psych clinical psychologist, and he would go on about how, you know, how many people he's helped, and, um, but one of the first um, lectures that he had about um, 
the career path, one of my first questions is how many money, how much money did it make? We love the love. Yeah, and um, he immediately said to me, it's not about how much money you make. If you're passionate about what you're doing, the money will come. And I said, and that put a seed in me that this isn't really something that I'm passionate about. I don't know that, I'm not going to make you know, <laughs> Yeah, if I'm not going to make money to make it, then I, I don't want to do it, you yeah. know? Um, so, um, a couple years later, I, I graduated from my bachelor's degree in, in psychology, and um, I happened upon a book. I mean, I was reading tons at that time because I graduated college and I had some extra time on my hands. Um, so I was reading A Long Walk to Freedom uh, mm -hmm. by Nelson Mandela. Wow. I haven't read it. It must be amazing. It is an amazing... A Long Walk to Freedom. A Long Walk mm -hmm. to Freedom. It's an amazing, amazing story um, about Nelson Mandela's journey. Um, from the time that he was a young man, um, starting out in South Africa, um, to um, a few years before the end of his life. Mm -hmm. um, so most people know Nelson Mandela's story um, through South Africa and what he went through with apartheid and him being in jail for, I believe it was 24? 26. 26, yeah, 26 years. Mm -hmm. um, but the beginning of that story really caught me and the end of that story um, really inspired me. Um, what I took from that book wasn't a story of oppression. It wasn't a story of hardship. Um, it really gave me hope as to what one man really or a team of people could do to change the situation that they're in. Um, when I was reading this book, it was uh, shortly after, I don't know if you guys remember, the uh, sequester, uh, the government sequester of, I think it was 2013, and I was just um, baffled by how our government could take people's lives into such non-consideration. I mean, it was all about special interests and making sure that um, people's pockets are padded and um, people's, the basics of people's lives weren't, um, weren't considered. So, um, I took that into this is something that I want to... And at the on. same time, you were yeah. finishing the book. At the same time, so, I was finishing okay. the book. Mm -hmm. So I took that and I said... I actually already started my uh, taking a couple classes with, um, toward my master's degree mm -hmm. in psychology. And I was also working in the field um, already, working with people with disabilities. And I said, you know, this isn't something I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, it's a wonderful profession and it helps a lot of people, but it's not my my passion and what I feel like I was put on this earth to do. Um, so I. Um, Within about two months, I... That was quick. Yeah. <laughs> she had a coach. We're going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So within about two months, I um, I gave my notice at my job. Mm -hmm. I applied for uh, a few master's degree programs across the country. Um, a friend of mine told me about a school called American University, which had one of the top uh, political science uh, degree programs. And I said, well, that is my goal. I want to be in Washington, D.C., um, where the action is. Uh -huh. And, um, and I watched House of Cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cards. Yeah, so uh, that's, where, that's where I want to be. And um, that's, that's the, the path I want to take. So um, I applied. Uh, I had, I think it was a great um, statement of purpose. I remember I have no experience in political science. My 
undergrad is in um, psychology. I've only worked in psychological fields. So, um, but thankfully, I got accepted to um, American University and I completed my master's degree uh, in political science. Um, how was it? Because I, I, I'm curious. I have one question to you, then one for you. Yeah. Okay. So you had all of this background, and you were working, you went to school for it with very specific thoughts and goals. Okay, you want to be a psychologist, right? Right. Suddenly you go to your master's with another point of view, now I'm going to go into politics. How does it, did it feel in the beginning? Did it feel right or wrong? Or were you scared? I, I was very scared. I was very scared. Um, I've moved, I've never seen Washington DC mm -hmm. before, before I was there. Did you meet Obama? I don't know, I've never met Obama. I have not yet met Hillary. So you know I, I'm, I'm thinking, I will. I know, <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, yeah, um, but I was very scared at mm -hmm. that point. Um, I went in to one of the top universities with zero experience in the field. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, people around me, I was just like, oh my gosh, this person's so smart. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 it's a hard thing. I'm just like, who well, will me, you know, coming from a psychology. <laughs> I'm sure they will look at you, you were, you were what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, actually, the people were very encouraging. Uh -huh. um, when I said that, I mean, I thought that I was making a complete 180, but people would be like, oh, well, there are some connections between political science and psychology. You know, you need to learn people in order to be good at this profession, yeah. you know? And uh, I did find that to be true. Of course. Yeah, I did find that to be true. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was a very scary time of my life. The first um, two semesters, I would say, I was, I didn't work my uh, entire first year. I studied all the time. <laughs> I just studied it's all the time. <laughs> um, and I still actually didn't feel good enough until I actually completed. It's, it's not hard to feel, to feel that you were doing so much and you feel that it's not it's not good enough. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Absolutely. When you look back, okay, the moment, okay, between Mandela yeah. and, and what happened in, in, in with the government, what do you recall that was the trigger? Or the moment that you said, you know what, enough is enough, I've had enough, I gotta change something. The moment that I finished the book, uh, yeah. Nelson, uh, I read that book. Freedom, I, the moment I finished it, um, I realized that this isn't the path that I was supposed to take. And, um, and then I also said I had a coach <laughs> <laughs> right. to help to come through. Who wants your coach? But, yeah. <laughs> Just, well, let me jump in here for a minute before you finish the story. What I want to impart to you, um, the listeners, is that whatever you were born to do lays dormant in you until the fire starter. It's just like putting fire starter on wood. Something is going to grab your attention. It could be an injustice that you see is happening to someone. It can be a book where the person that wrote the book inspires you. And whatever is in you comes a flame. And that's what happened with Keisha. She came out of that and said, you know what? I want to change systems. I want to be like Nelson Mandela because he sacrificed his whole life for the people. It wasn't for him. I don't want to do this just for me. I want to make a difference in the world. Mother Teresa would have said the same thing. A lot of philanthropists and humanitarians would say the same thing. They are not in it for themselves. They are in it for what they can give to the world. And I will tell you that whatever your purpose is, God wants you to make a difference in the world. It's never for you, which is why service is always the most rewarding thing. So once that fire started in Keisha, and we sat down together and made a plan, 
to how we can accomplish it, doors started opening. And that's one of the ways you know that you're on purpose when things are easy. Anytime you have to force it, anytime you have to fight it, that means you're going to guess. She got into American University with no experience, with nothing, no political. They asked her, were you ever a class president? Did you ever do any work in the field? She didn't know that, but she got in. And then she's going to tell you what she's doing now, but God also opened that door. And that's how it happens. We talk a lot in this in this segment or in this show about meditation and finding out who you are. And whenever you are able to tap in to who you are, what you're here for, the universe and God opens the doors. It just comes right in. He will put people in front of you. He would open doors for you that was closed. So that that's all you need to do. You. The reason her story is so different is because she didn't at that point have any political skill. And that's what I said to her. I said, you didn't have any of the politician stuff, but you have the court. Now, if not go, no, there is no now. I have a question. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I think it's very pretty. Oh, wait, let's say the world was a little bit and all that crap. It's beautiful. No, I'm saying it's, it's very nice. But there is a but. I'm here listening to the two of you, and I think, okay, this is way too perfect for my people. There must be something behind it. Let me, well, I, I have a question, not to coach you, you know, okay, big coach you, know, the mother. Yes, the mother who, yes. who creates all this crazy expectation about the daughter. Don't say, oh, I don't because you're lying. <laughs> because if you are a parent and you create, suddenly your little daughter is this beautiful woman, very smart, and she has a career in front of her as a psychologist, and you must be very excited. Then she says, you know what, mother? I don't think that's what I want to do. I want to change. How you as a mother, forget about the coach, but you as a mother, uh, react to that. Well, you know, Dan, that's an incredibly insightful question. And I love that because that is so important to the story. My daughter came to me. I was a new coach. I don't. I wasn't even graduating. Yeah. I want to go fix everything. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was like, fix my daughter. Right? No, no. But what happened? I was in school for coaching, and when I was in school, you have to practice coaching. Uh -huh. So everybody got coaching. So my daughter, got, my daughter got coaching. Oh my my friends got coaching. Every conversation, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I turn it into. So, let me count the hours. <laughs> let me put my exactly um, everybody. So we had coaching sessions before this. And then she comes and she sits down and she tells me this story. And I will tell you as a mother, my first reaction mm -hmm. was, this girl's story of her life. She's what <laughs> means the only one that I spent. My <laughs> sweet Mother Teresa daughter has no politician skills. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember, I told you that I am a reader. You that line. Yep. I am a reader. Uh -huh. I study, and a week before our conversation, I came across something that said that whenever somebody comes to you with a goal, you should never knock it down. So I sat there and I squelched my motherly <laughs> That's what reaction. To see it. Yes, I squelched my motherly reaction, and I made myself become a coach. And what I said is, "Okay, Keisha." What do you have to do to achieve this goal? And we sat down and we pondered on all the things to do. May I, of course, young people. Okay. For the mother who is there watching right. us and she doesn't have the coaching skills, right. what one thing you suggest whenever she faces this situation? Or a father. Always encourage. Always encourage. Always encourage. If it's not meant to be, you'll find it on your own. And let but you should always let them make encourage. a mistake. Yes, you should always encourage. Okay. Right. Thank you. you don't. We we had talked just last week in our last session about 
the counselor that told you that you shouldn't be my mentor. Your mentor From that told you. you we talk about Les Brown. That I someone told him that she should right. That he because he he had a, a learning disability that he would never make it as a coach. Yeah. I mean, as a speaker, as whatever. You should not tear down someone's dream. And if there's anything you take away from there, because guess what? She is on purpose. And we talk about we talk about the fact that she went across the country to live in Washington DC, tackled a subject that she didn't know anything about. It was very difficult. But she guess what? I wanted to see all that. So guess what? She is now living it. Don't say she is I now to give from her. Okay, hang on, but I, I want to say something now because how you know you're in purpose uh -huh. is how you feel when you're doing what you're doing, right? So it is a feeling. It's, it it is, is a feeling. feeling. The thing is, is right now, I mean, as her mom, I know she works 10, 14 hours a day, and I would say to her, Keisha, you have to have balance. You can't work so hard. You can't do whatever. Uh -huh. But she's doing it because she loves it. She's doing it because she's on purpose. So anyway, continue the story. Sure, what do you know now? <laughs> well, uh, I work for Common Cause, mm -hmm. which is Common Cause. Common Cause. Mm -hmm. It's a good government organization, a watchdog organization uh, that works on campaign finance reform, voting rights, um, money and politics issues, uh, the, the gamut. And I came into the field saying that I wanted to get big money out of politics. And um, I remember saying that to my advisor, <laughs> my uh, current advisor, and he said, well, that's very specific. <laughs> and you're most likely not going to find something. <laughs> you're most likely not going to find something in that field. There's only a handful of organizations that work on this. To make money, right? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's only a handful of organizations that work on this issue. Um, you might want to expand your horizons a little bit. Um, I want you to say, the very first internship that I got was with Common Cause, um, an organization that I admired and um, looked, to, looked towards um, since the time that I became um, excited about uh -huh. politics. So, yes. um, when I actually was home on, on, on um, either summer break and I saw uh, a notification flash across my screen that um, my professor had posted that they were looking for a intern and I dropped everything. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what happens. I tell you, God puts things in front of you. It's yeah. beautiful. I dropped everything at that very moment and I applied and I got the internship. Uh, I worked hard uh, for that semester long, and they decided they wanted to hire me afterwards. There was like four or five different people that lobbied for me to, to get a position off of them. So they created a position for me um, to work. And then her boss became president. So now she works right on her to president. Trump? <laughs> 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 Someone else is going to be uh, uh, <laughs> Exactly. So what do we gather from all this? What we gather from all of this is that your purpose inside is inside of you. You have to look inside. You have to figure out what you like, whether it's something that you do. And you have to listen for if what you're working on is not the right thing. And I will say it's a big number that do what you should do. <laughs> A big number that when you went to the guidance counselor in high school, they said, you know what, you should get into computers because it's a good field and you can make lots of money. Or you, you, you chose a career based on what someone told you to do. Right? And it never brings you happiness. It never brings you fulfillment. I had one of my clients that was working at one of the large Fortune 500 companies, making good money. And she said she wasn't fulfilled. 
I'm all at people, yep. and she's not fulfilled. There was nothing wrong with her job. Her marriage was perfect. She was making big money. She was in human resources. She had management. Everything that she wanted was there. But inside, she was not fulfilled. Inside, she was not on purpose. So it took us almost a full year of coaching for her to figure out what her purpose is. And guess what? She's not a life coach. <laughs> oh, what a life coach. Not her. No. I don't have my clients. Oh, you're not a life coach. I'm going to see. I got sidetracked. But I was so enjoying it. One of yeah. my clients is not, is not a life coach. Because um, that's her. her, that's her and so, her so we can wrap up. Okay. I, I, I want to hear from you and from you too. So we have a guy. She can answer sure. first. <laughs> what are the two things that you believe are key very quickly to find your purpose? The key thing to find your purpose is God puts it in you, so you just have to look for it. It's on it. things that you like to do, things that you're passionate about, right? things that you're good at, your natural talents, your natural abilities. Sometimes it's not natural abilities, as in Keisha's case, but in my case, what I'm doing now, I have a natural ability to do it. <laughs> I've always liked learning. I've always liked sharing. I've always liked doing what I do now. Now. And God gave me a natural ability. I'm a good speaker. Mm -hmm. I have a good personality. I have certain things that make what I do part of my purpose. So, so, yeah. In my, my I'm very specific about this. Okay. But and I want to end with my answer. Is that yes. okay? Yes, Keisha. Okay, so two things. Um, I would say passion uh -huh. would definitely be one of them, and learning. Um, if I didn't come across a yes. long walk to freedom by researching and, and wanting to learn more, um, I probably would have missed my purpose. Yes. So. So learning constantly. Yes, constantly learning. And that's what I did. Right. Yeah. That's what, 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 what that's what, what happens when we interview with them all the two other yes. ones. <laughs> and we start the first and she finishes the second. So you, so you now can see, and we are not cutting this, but I have to go through it. But I survived. It's, it's been amazing. It's been, I, I love it. All right. So let's hear it from Coach Dan. In my opinion, <laughs> you said so, it really struck me. You said that uh, what you are good at. But many people, they don't know what they are good at. Until my late 20s, I didn't know what I was good at. I couldn't see myself being good at anything. I mean, I'm being very honest. Uh, so, being curious, trying different things, learning was a key thing for me. But the main reason, the main thing for me was these two guys here. My niece. You pray? Okay. <laughs> I remember okay. how yeah. many nights yes. I put yes. my knees on the floor, my arms on the top of my bed, and I said, Father, I need, I need to direction. I need to know, and I was very specific, I need to know why I'm here. Uh -huh. and, I, and one day I was so upset with myself and with God, with everything, and I said, enough is enough. And I came here for a reason, and the least you can do, I told God like this, I'm so, I, 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 I tried a lot with that. Uh, the least you can do is to show me why I came here, because I refuse to end my life without knowing That's good. what I came here for. And it started happening. Oh, and wow. guess what? I started studying coaching. I learned that I people like to listen to me sometimes. I know that my students love me as a professor, so I became a professor. I became a facilitator. I became a speech, a speaker. And nowadays, when I go to uh, like to talk to audiences, can be ten people or three thousand people. I know I was born for that. Wow. And, 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 but I had to pray a lot and cry a lot. Yes. So all and of you this, have a natural ability. And all of this, yes. big, but I don't see any of that. So you see, I had to ask and beg. I'm not going to say ask. I had to beg to, to the God to show me what was happening, what I came here for. So this is what I have. I, and that's very important. So let me, let, me, let me support that for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, 
You all, the Bible says acts and you shall receive. Just yesterday, Keisha and I were meditating. And I, she said, well, I need to know what I need to work on in the new year. And you know what I said to her? Mm -hmm. I said, don't look for it out there. Meditate and act. And this morning she comes back and she had like five things. <laughs> if you ask the universe, you ask God, he'll give it to you. Yeah. If you have a question, you ask it before you go to bed. Whether it's on your knees or just in your mind, you ask and you will receive. Shakespeare, start yeah. with asking. Shakespeare said, when you look outside, you dream. When you look inside, you yeah. discover. Yeah. And purpose is about discovery yeah. and looking inside. Yeah. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. It's just so nice to you. I know. I love this. Well, you see, we are giving you life here. We are giving you information to stimulate what's inside of you. And if something that we say resonates with you, then you expand it. You take it further. Maybe something that Keisha said. Because she said some powerful things. You're sitting at home and you're watching this and you're realizing that you too can make that change. Just go do it. Go for it. Yes. You can do it. Yes. So, until next time, I'm Coach Rooney Young. I'm Coach Dan Wells. Keisha. <laughs> Keisha, okay, from DC. That's right. So thank you for tuning in to You Ask For It. You can have yourself a blessed evening. Yeah, and if you have a question to us, please send it. It's going to be a pleasure for us to sit here and answer your question. But as always, if you like our uh, our show, please share with your friends on Facebook, on your email, to, to all your followers. Do whatever you want to do with it, but do something. Get the word out. It's not just for you. It's for everybody. So yes. thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.